Hey, it's Lisa Mitchell, the people reader and founder of Power Body Language. Um, so I'm going to start doing this thing on the regular called Body Language Breakdown. And I'm going to just take a look at what's going on, who's giving interviews, what's happening in the world of politics and pop culture, uh, and really start helping clue you guys in on what people's body language are saying. Uh, or saying in these different situations. So this is kind of my my first crack at this one and I could not resist because Sean Spicer is uh, such an amazing character. Uh, he is the former White House press secretary, as you know, and he is, love him or hate him, uh, dude has charisma. And uh, he he's, doesn't lack for things to see uh, from a body language perspective as he's talking. So. His tenure in the White House was really uh, kind of kind of uh, tenuous, and his relationship with the press corps was really just a spectacle to behold. And granted, he's got one of the toughest jobs in the world. And uh, when he was interviewing uh, or interviewed by Kimmel, he really kind of showed up as this warm, charismatic guy that could take a joke. And that's so different from anything that we ever saw of him when he was uh, functioning as the press secretary. So that was one of the biggest things I noticed is just um, when he made his entrance, he did seem very uh, kind of buttoned down. He kind of uh, played small. He didn't take up a lot of space. He didn't interact with the audience a whole lot. You could tell that there was a high level of discomfort uh, around him being there. He was probably uh, a little nervous about what Kimmel was going to throw at him because Kimmel has had many, many nights of jokes at, at his expense. So it was interesting to see. They had a pretty warm dynamic, though. There was a, a warm exchange, and it took Spicer a minute to kind of settle in and, and get animated. At the beginning of the interview, as they were talking about kind of his function at the White House and challenges, he was very um, upright and kept his hands folded on his lap and really didn't use a lot of gestures. If he did gesture, it was just a one-handed um, slight movement, but he was very buttoned down and a little cautious. And as they got further into the interview, you kind of see Sean Spicer come to life. And you see him get really animated around a couple of specific things that I noted. One of them was when he was asked about having to defend the crowd size at the inauguration. Uh, and he instantly showed the contempt micro expression. So a little, a little half smile when he was asked about that. And, and he shrugged as he was talking about having to defend it, which is oftentimes a cue of deception, uh, meaning maybe his body did not really agree with the words that he was saying. Uh, he was really neutral about it, and he just continuously went back to the fact that his job in that capacity as press secretary is to speak for the president, to be the voice of the president's opinions. And he kind of removed himself from responsibility as far as content goes and was like, hey, guys, I'm just I'm just here to push the president's thoughts to the forefront and to share them publicly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not taking ownership for any any of the things that I had to say or do. So there was definitely kind of um, some intentional separation between content and him being the person that delivered it. So that was interesting. There was also a lot of um, anger. Uh, express anger, micro expressions, animated gesturing, much more pointed um, hand gestures and movements when he was talking to the press or talking about how the press uh, questioned his integrity and how that had kind of started right out of the gate. And you could tell that he had really strong emotions around the topic of having his integrity questioned and um, being challenged on a personal level by people who had uh, formerly been his friends or had had good working relationships with him in the media where you really see him dig in and get super animated and start using a full range of gestures and even leaning in and taking a little bit of Jimmy's space from his desk was when he was talking about uh, being lumped in to a category. And he, he got a very adversarial um, posture about him and got a little bit more combative as he started talking about them, meaning the press corps and us, meaning the White House or, or conservatives or Republicans or whatever his specific point of reference is at that point. He got really, um, I won't say combative because it wasn't negative, but he got very animated and very forceful, which was a big change in variance based on his more buttoned down and, and kind of self-contained demeanor that he had 
um, at the beginning of the interview. You continue to see him come to life um, as they go on. They, they show clips of Melissa McCarthy playing him um, on Saturday Night Live, and, and he actually expresses some, some real, true, genuine happiness. The, the eye muscles are activated, and, and he's actually smiling and enjoying those moments as they were having a dialogue around Melissa McCarthy um, and, his, and her role, and then he joked that, yeah, and then she won an Emmy. Right? So he lost his job or, or quit his job, and, and Melissa wins an, wins an Emmy for the material that he gave her basically to work with. So there's some moments of humor, um, a, a little bit of annoyance, a couple of shoulder shrugs, like, hey, maybe I'm just going to say this, but I don't necessarily mean it um, throughout. Um, but what I really thought was interesting is Kemmel asked him specifically about, do you believe that Trump actually wants to be president. And without hesitation and with a very strong tone in his voice, he says, absolutely. And he punctuates it with an affirming head nod um, and just really backs up his own statement with his body language. So for those people that thought maybe, you know, Spicer doesn't even think Trump wants to be president, his body language is telling me he actually does. He believes that Trump wants to be in there, that he's working from a place of good intentions, even if he um, is a little clumsy on execution or, or doesn't always perform the way people um, expect him to. He was very genuine as well when he talked about what an honor it was to serve um, his country and to serve in the capacity that he was allowed to serve. Uh, that was that was genuine. There was lots of, of congruent head nodding on his statements, um, a gesturing that, that told me that he was affirming and, and, and disclosing and being honest about what he was saying. Um, body language tells me Spicer really does think it was an honor. Um, his body language around the humor of it also tells me that he believes it was uh, way more than he thought it would be. And uh, maybe he got in a little bit over, over his head, but his intentions were always good. Uh, that's really, those were kind of my key findings. I, I watched the whole clip. It's about 20 minutes long, but my key takeaways is that he's a little reserved to begin. Uh, he, he was a little cautious and, and played, played a little small, honestly, for the stature of, of the man that he is and at the position that he held. Um, but he wasn't afraid to take space and to even put his hand down on Jimmy's desk as he was punctuating certain points and, and the more contentious topics around the media and around um, having to defend some of Trump's uh, stances on things. He, he was okay claiming space when he felt really passionate about it. And I think that's pretty normal um, from how most people operate. We, we sometimes will be a little more timid or a little bit more reserved or um, maybe a little more closed in and in our space when we feel comfortable or uncertain about something. But man, you fire us up, you hit a topic that we feel really passionate about or that we've had a really emotional experience with and you're gonna see the animation come in. Most of us are gonna get a little bit bigger, we're gonna lean in, we're gonna gesture a little more aggressively, we might even claim somebody else's space if we're really trying to make a point. So how we use our space, how uh, we show up in a room with our posture, acknowledging other people, um, how we kind of carry ourselves when, when we're in default mode or when we're waiting to respond, do we play small or do we take up a little bit more space? All of those things really contribute to how confident we are. So I saw Spicer's confidence grow throughout his interview. His, his body language told me he was getting a little more comfortable. He figured out it was okay to have a little bit of fun, um, that it, it wasn't kind of a, a gotcha interview. There, It was a little bit more a chance for him to tell his side of the story and share his experience, which I think he, he ultimately really appreciated. There was definitely a warmth between him, he, him and Jimmy Kimmel as the interview went on. And, and they actually had a moment where they shared a photo from several, several years ago when um, when Spicer was still in the Navy and Kimmel was co-hosting on live uh, with Kelly. And, and it was Fleet Week and they just happened to get a picture together of, of him outside in the audience. So uh, the world is small. They shared that moment. It really helped. Um, it helped increase his charisma because he's not the most charismatic person naturally, but charisma by definition is the, the combination of warmth 
and competence. So where we know he's competent, it was nice to see a little bit of that warmth, a little bit of the, the man behind the curtain, if you will. It, it kind of changed my opinion of him and, and made me like him more. And um, for anyone in a position of leadership or someone who's in the public eye, anything you can do to kind of create commonality, share a story, share an experience, increases your warmth and it goes a long way towards increasing your charisma too. So those are my takeaways. He enjoyed his experience. It was a, a tough time. He didn't agree with everything he had to say. His body told me a whole lot about how he experienced his time in the White House. And uh, hopefully this was helpful for you too. You can catch the full video um, on Jimmy Kimmel's YouTube channel if you want to see it. Uh, until then, if you want to connect with me, you can email me, lisa at powerbodylanguage.com. Go to my site, powerbodylanguage.com, or connect with me, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or anywhere else. I'd love to engage. Talk soon.